Hello everyone and welcome to our talk today. Our topic today is NIW green card, new standard and case example. Well, as we know, NIW, the full name is National Interest Waiver. What is waived is the labor certificate requirement, the job offer requirement. The labor certificate these days is commonly referred as PERM. If you have seen our other videos, you will know well, NIW is one common pathway for applicants, especially scientists, researchers, engineers, and professionals you know, use NIW to get their green card. Uh, I myself received my green card through NIW. Well, I applied back in the year 2000, and my application was filed before I received my PhD degree from the University of Maryland and I received approval while I was a postdoc researcher in the NIH. So back then, NIW has a different standard, and uh, currently there is a new standard, so that's why we want to share it with everybody. Well, this new standard, as some of you know, it's called the matter of the NASA. That is the case that set up this new standard. It was in December 2016 which has been more than two years now, but recently we have seen more and more NIW approvals, and we believe NIW is a very good pathway for applicants. Well, not only from China, India, but also from the rest of the world, because you may know that as of now, if you apply your US green card through NIW, there's no cutoff date, no waiting time. The priority date is current. Well, if you apply through the EB1 category for Alien with Extraordinary Ability or Outstanding Researcher or Multinational Company Executive, there's a waiting time. Why? Well, it's relatively complicated. If you really want to know, you can contact us. But the issue, the overall result is you can get your green card faster, actually, if you go through the NIW pathway. So, of course, NIW is attractive, but well, does your background fit NIW or not? Let's see. Currently, under the new standard, there are three prongs for NIW. The first is the proposed work has substantial merit and national importance. We will explain this later. But basically, if you are doing medical research, engineering work, scientific research, or even social science, business, art, education, you may meet NIW requirement. For example, recently, we have a client from Asia, who's uh, majored in violin performance, and she's so good, she got some awards, and she performed in various occasions, and she filed NIW with our help, and the application was approved smoothly. So, you see, you don't have to be a rocket scientist in order to qualify for NIW. Actually, in the past, social workers, businessmen, entrepreneurs, well, they all received NIW approvals. So, the first prong focuses on the background. The field. The second problem is applicant is well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor. So how to prove that? Well, we'll see later. But basically, it focuses on the applicant's own experience, qualification. The third problem is on balance. It would be beneficial to the U.S. to waive the job offer and the labor certification. Okay. So you see, it's relatively simple. First problem focus on the field. Second prong on the personal experience and the qualification. Third prong, a combination, overall consideration. So, as I said, you know, actually under this new standard, it should be relatively easier to have NIW approved. How does the USCIS interpret these three prongs? Let's see you know, details from the USCIS own words. For the first prong, well, proposed work has substantial merit and national importance. Well, the work can be in business, you know, science, technology, culture, health, education. In determining what the proposed endeavor has national importance, whether it is important or not, well, the USCIS will consider the potential prospective impact. So you do not have to already well, make a very significant impact, but what you have made, you know, the progress in the past, your experience, your qualification, all these things that you accumulate through the past years, that can help to show you are going to make great contribution to the U.S. national interest. And the second prong focuses on that part, to determine whether the applicant is well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor. USCIS will consider factors including the individual's educational background, skills, 
knowledge, and record of success in related or similar efforts in the past, including a model or plan for future activities, and any progress towards achieving the proposed endeavor, you know, such as if you are doing research, whether there's any progress in the research projects that you have worked on, and whether there's relevant evidence, such as publications, citations, recommendation letters, etc. And the interest of potential customers, users, investors, other relevant entities or individuals. Well, for scientists, researchers, professionals, those interests can be in the forms of commentaries, maybe inquiries for more information or sample, media reports, awards, and, and uh, review article discussions, all these. So it focuses on your past achievements, your track record, which can help show you meet the second prong that you are well positioned to further advance the field. And the third prong is on balance, it would be beneficial to the U.S. to waive the job offer and the labor certification. So how to prove this? Well, sometimes the benefit to the U.S. is so great. So even assuming other qualified U.S. workers are available, U.S. would still benefit from the applicant's contribution. Sometimes the national interest in the U.S. for this foreign national's contribution is sufficiently urgent. Uh, for example, there's widespread disease or there's environmental need, new energy source, new materials, or even for maybe improvement in the economy or employment overall. And this may warrant foregoing the labor certification. Also, sometimes it will be impractical to secure a job offer or labor certification. Maybe the applicant is abroad, maybe the applicant is an entrepreneur. So all these, as a combination of the first prong and the second prong, can show that the applicant meets the NIW requirement. Now let's look at a real case published by the USCIS. The applicant is a physician and also a biomedical researcher. The research focuses on treatment of leukemia. So the USCIS find well, this kind of scientific medical research obviously bears substantial merit and a potential impact with national importance. And uh, the second prong, the past experience of this applicant, both as a physician and as a biomedical researcher, renders him well positioned to further advance the field. And uh, the USCIS considered evidence, including especially recommendation letters, explaining the work has provided insight well, to others, and the applicant has expertise in the field with published work and the citation evidence, record of success contributing to various research projects, including progress in cancer research. Here, please keep a note that the USCIS did not specifically mention well, how many publications the applicant had and how many citations the papers received in what kind of top journals the applicant work were published. So all these will help, but they are not absolutely necessary, as long as there is sufficient evidence to show the applicant individual has made sufficient progress uh, evidence uh, for advancing the research projects that may be enough to satisfy the second problem. And the third problem, well, on balance, it benefits the U.S to waive the labor certificate requirement. Here, this applicant is a physician and biomedical researcher. Petitioner possesses considerable experience and expertise in both biochemistry and pathology. So here, again, the USCIS emphasized the individual's progress in advancing research in his own field, as well as the widespread benefits associated with research progress in the area to the U.S. national interest. And then, in combination of the two, on balance, the USCIS fund NIW should be approved so that applicant offers contribution of such value that, on balance, they would benefit the U.S., even assuming that other qualified U.S. workers are available. So, we have just discussed the three prongs for NIW requirement and the specific interpretation of these three prongs with case example. 
Overall, we have obtained numerous NIW and EBY approvals for professionals with all kinds of background. You can check our other YouTube videos and our website for more information, or you can contact us to get more information about your own case. As we mentioned, many applicants may already meet the NIW requirements, whether they are currently applying or not, and uh, consider that currently it is relatively easy to get NIW approved. As we just uh, went through the three prongs for NIW, you should take the opportunity to prepare and file your NIW application sooner than later. If you have any question, you can contact us. Again, the topic of this video is NIW green card, new standard, and case example. Thank you.